But like, oh, this wait. is our first podcast ever, and this is the one where I'm like, you know, geeking out about stuff. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> but, but we already did it. Now we're just talking about like controversial stuff. and depressing stuff. So, but isn't that fun? Nah. Oh. Just the only time I like discussing depressing stuff is when like discussing Tejas is writing. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Fuck you. <laughs> So okay, let's start by just uh, talking about the stuff that we liked in Transistor the most. No, no. Let's start by saying this will be a spoiler cast. We will discuss plot details. Yeah, that too. Yeah. So assuming you haven't played Transistor and intend to play it, then yeah, like don't listen to this podcast at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not like a lot of people are listening every week when we have to warn our listeners away. But <laughs> those of you that do listen, don't. Yeah. So yes, okay. So let's talk about the stuff we liked in Transistor. So let's start with Rashi. What do you think? Hmm. Well, uh, the game's gorgeous. Uh, the music is divine. And, divine. Uh, wow. Yes, the music sure is. And uh, yeah. The gameplay is was pretty cool. I mean, I have not played turn-based games uh, too much, so for me it was a pretty new experience and a pretty enjoyable one. Well, that's nice. Like, uh, so you actually had fun with that whole combat system, and yeah, uh, it, it took me a while to get used to it. I mean, I didn't understand initially what I had to do, but then eventually I got I got used to it. I uh, when I started playing the game, it had just come out, so there weren't a lot of uh, tutorials or you know people who could help me and like figure stuff out. So I okay, usually uh, like read or it, something. I I have to interject here. So do you yeah. often like uh, it, it's just something like when you mentioned that you know there weren't a lot of tutorials and all. Do you mm-hmm. often go like or uh, like stuck in a game? Uh, yeah, I do sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, like, IGN's wiki guide or something, I'll usually, like, open it up and read it if I'm stuck somewhere. So, there was not a lot of stuff in it. So, but um, I just, I did see one video in which it explained that, okay, this is how it works. And then I was like, okay, fine, now I know. So, it took me some time to figure it out. Uh, I'll admit, it did take me a moment to kind of get to grips with, uh, you know, the way... uh, Yeah. Uh, the the way the functions and the mixing and matching worked, but yeah, I, yeah, uh, that that was my problem. Ah, <laughs> uh, hmm. yeah, like, it took me a moment to like, uh, like, but the moment it clicks, you're just like, oh, yeah. damn! And I, I and I know I geeked out about this in like a little bit to Vivek over uh, <laughs> like that at some point. I was just like, oh my god, I love this. This is fucking awesome. And I think for the last week and a half, I've pretty much told everybody who would listen how awesome that system is. I've like yeah I've fallen in love with what they they tried to do and I would say managed to achieve as well. Yep. Okay, well, so I like I like the combat system the most. Uh, for me at least, I, it took me like roughly the first playthrough to finally like understand what's like great about the system because before that like I was unlocking abilities piecemeal and like I didn't have enough memory to actually start. My, uh, like using like three functions at the you know in the single slot so like i think this game like is and especially like once i completed the second playthrough i went for like 100 percent achievements everything so i think this is a game with a great combat system but unfortunately the first story run is all the tutorial it's like a five hour long tutorial wait you finished the game in five hours no i'm saying uh, it it is a game yeah like i it i i finished the game exactly twice 100% achievements everything and i have like 10 hours on the the play it played me so i'm assuming it was just like time taken by two well uh, I, I i think i took about um uh 9 to 10 hours so hold on let me just check steam to see uh, how long i took cuz uh 
Seven hours. Okay. So it, okay, maybe I overestimated. So it says, uh, according to Steam, I took about seven hours to finish this. Uh, I do remember that I spent like um, it, like an entire weekend, as in one like an entire Sunday rather. I started in the afternoon around uh, two or three, and finished uh, around dinner. I don't remember what time it was, but yeah, like I I got hooked and I just couldn't stop and it was brilliant. Uh, I like I I I I will keep coming back to that combat system. I think what they managed to do uh, with the whole fa with that whole function system is is just it's genius. Like uh, to have like a limited set of abilities, but to actually ha like code in like a primary, then a weapon upgrade, and then or a weapon passive, and then a individual like global character passive. That was so good. That like. I, I love that idea. That made my day, honestly. I like. I just had so much fun experimenting with that. Hmm. Yeah, I liked actually. Uh, uh, like I, I enjoyed the challenges more than the actual gameplay scenarios because the gameplay scenarios were kind of uh, like they had a lot of solutions and like there was a lot of room for mistakes. In the challenges, you had to make. Uh, Almost, you know, like every second count. Yeah, the challenges. But the, 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 that's what the chap. That's what challenges are kind of for. You know, to like mm -hmm. really push you to find the solution. It's more of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that, uh, like, uh, one thing that I, I actually like initially I was a bit iffy about. Like, I kind of like, like when I play a game, I'm a bit of a lore, lore hound. Uh, like, you know, I'll try and read everything, figure out everything. But, um, like, so initially when I began, I kind of wanted to know what was going on. And the, the story was a bit vague. Hmm. And when I did find out that, okay, you can read into the functions, but then the functions only in unlocked information when you use them in different ways. Hmm. Uh, initially, that felt a bit arbitrary. But... Hmm. At, like by like after a few iterations of that, I was kind of happy because because of that, I did try out different uh, combinations of skills, yeah. and you know I found things that oh wait you know uh, this this combination works better than what I had expected it to, and I think that's that's a really good decision on uh, on Super Giant's part uh, to kind of push for that to ensure that that I mean, they stuck with that. Um, well, I don't like. I don't like the the way they handled lore because it was like right to the end. Even though you read all the journals, like nothing is like they told to you directly. It's all no, like oh yeah, there's something here. Like but, they are always telling, never showing, basically. Yeah, but that I, I kind of liked it because you know some people don't like so much of story. They don't want to read all that stuff. So. Mm -hmm. They could have totally skipped it, and if you really wanted to know what was going on, you can always like, you know, just go back, read, take your time to read what is going on, and you know, just figure stuff out on your own as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, like, um, like I can kind of understand where you're coming from with that, um, but honestly, like, I really love reading shit. Like, you know, like <laughs> I, I love, I love, you know, you know, figuring things out. But complete surprise with everyone on this podcast. Tejas is a lore hound. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I, I do agree. Like even Vivek, like Vivek, remember I messaged you and told you like how annoyed I was with how vague the story was, especially yeah. to start off with. Like unless mm. until you start unlocking some of the story bits, I didn't even know who the main boss was. Like you know, you the first boss is Cybil Rees. You kill mm. her, and you don't even know why she matters yeah. until yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think they could have done a little bit better with that. I I still love the fact that they unlocked bits of backstory with uh, with the functions, but I think they could have been a bit more upfront about the world, about the characters. Yeah, I think yeah. like I think if you if you piece it all together, you discover in the end exactly why. Uh, okay, spoiler, big spoiler alert. So if you've been listening till this point, big spoiler alert. I'm spoiling the ending. You if you pay attention and you read all the functions, you slowly realize that all of Red's friends have disappeared and died and they're now in the transistor because yeah. all these people you're reading about, they're all her friends. Mm, yeah. A lot, of, a, a lot of them are her friends. And that adds so much more context to why she decides to kill herself in the end. 
that because I, I, she's like, completely okay, okay I'll, I'll i'll have to say that the whole ending thing where she does that is like wow like i did not see that coming and definitely as much as I hate, like you know moments like this in games where you have no control this was well done like it was like holy shit because it it leads up to that so well yeah yeah, it's, it's so like, yeah well like for me at least like i don't know about because for me it was like all the time somebody was telling me that something was else was happening like the city is always empty so you never see like uh you know you never see anything that any of these friends what they did and where they lived or what they were doing yeah, so there is no this, emotional touch with them yeah like all the time like I, i actually thought about like how this uh, the narration in transistor differs to the narration in bastion like in bastion most of the time the narrator is just telling you uh, just like in a funny or unique way describing what you're doing and in once every five lines he'll probably give you some background information here it was almost background information all the time Hmm. So this guy was always like hey red remember this hey red remember that hey red remember this square this used to happen so yeah. so all the time like I, i felt like like i was listening to an audiobook while playing an, a completely different game because like i was doing all this combat stuff i was beating up robots like they they looked like robots to me at least at the start like, dude their process let's let's yeah. use the right terms here Yeah okay yeah so i was killing the the process robots and no dude and they, no, dude, no. <laughs> yeah yeah and i was killing the process robot transformers and bad cells and shit like that <laughs> yeah i mean, i was killing the process robot transformers and then Randoms. yeah and then this guy was talking That's to me about like some abstract stuff like like theater and like hey remember we used to be like total like you know romeo and juliet type stuff <laughs> and like it was just this complete disconnect with what was happening okay. so like for that like i think bastion what it did well was that it remained connected to what you were doing like you you hit something and the the guy was like the kid is no fan of uh, pots for example even if you just like hit a pot so that was funny because the narrator you thought like narrator was trying to roll with whatever weird stuff you were doing uh huh here it was it was kind of like there is the lore audiobook just where went on going went on going never reacted to what you were doing so uh uh-huh. so, and again like it was like i was re- like when i unlocked stuff i was reading about some p- people in the abstract sense who this character saw way back so it wasn't even like like red just came back from meeting with this person it was like right. way back you were friends with this person so okay so like to me like i felt like there was a lack of connection between the player and the world hmm it's like red herself doesn't know what's happening and on top of that i also don't know what's happening so no i i would agree with that because i do remember like like once again i i i did express this to vivek earlier in chat uh is that like for the beginning portion i was lost but then i think um like one thing that i i've realized especially after bastion is that super giant does kind of rely on the like the next playthrough for more context um is that they they were kind of expecting the first playthrough or at least i'm assuming here uh to be something close to uh you know uh kind of like a third party peeking in but then after you get to the end and you get the reveal of like uh you know uh who the sword is and all that shit even though you can kind of predict it earlier it's yeah. concrete when you play the recursion uh which i think is an awesome way to turn new game plus mm-hmm. um you the the context of a lot of his dialogues changes and that adds more to the to the second playthrough and i i i get the feeling that you know the way they've designed uh bastion and this game is with the expectation for somebody to play through with uh play through the game again and not just once yeah and i guess I, I, yeah. i agree with you alvin that you know it's not fair to someone who's just there for the single player experience to mm-hmm. kind of feel lost it, it it's not right but at the same time um like as a design value like if this is what they wanted i can't argue that they didn't achieve it 
So mm-hmm. yeah, that, that I'm I'm kind of conflicted at that point. Yeah, like for me at least, like in the second playthrough, the story had completely lost me. Like I tried to like I st- tried to keep track of in the first couple of chapters, like until the bike section. Where she, uh-huh. But after that, like I just tuned out the story. So I was grateful that they didn't stop me, and like you know, I had to click a dialogue box next to proceed. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, uh-huh. like I, so anytime, like the, like what's his name, the transistor, uh, would start speaking, I, I would just rush to the next combat thing. So, so. Oh really? I actually enjoy. I still managed to enjoy what he was saying. I, I stick around to listen to. uh what he was saying actually yeah i don't know like i guess it just sort of like especially because i immediately started again uh, playing the second time so okay. yeah like i guess for me it just like i was sort of sick with the narration a bit okay that like like i said it's fair like you know uh mm-hmm. it, it's more of a subjective thing yeah. how uh people kind of enjoy or you know don't enjoy that story mm-hmm. uh I I still think that they have some great moments where they mix their uh you know their narrative with uh their um uh with the gameplay. I think one of the best mom like if if you come to the like uh, let's go to the end first uh because hell we're spoiling this shit anyways. <laughs> um like at the end uh Red decides to kill herself, right? And if we backtrack this um she's just defeated uh what's uh, whatever the i forget the guy's name uh the last one um shit royce uh, royce yes uh she defeats royce and then she comes back she has the ability to kind of fix the city right mm-hmm. and so i i love how they have you walk forward and then you get to that little square area with these pillars at each end and each end you can press e and then she does that little song and then the pillar changes from you know the process version to the artistic version and you do that at each corner and you know the the little tune kind of continues so if you're fast about it which i think most people would pick up on it uh you'd get like a proper continuous to, uh tune uh you get the idea that she can fix things uh with you know her voice which is just received back and then you move forward and you get back to exactly where you started the game where you pull the transistor out of uh you know out of this uh out yeah, of the dead yeah, character yeah. in the beginning exactly and you know she sings the tune and it's just it, it's the way it began it, it she, you know uh you get the idea that she was kind of expecting things to go back to before but they weren't and that's when she yeah, makes the yeah. deci- the decision I, i i really love that like they make you play through that and and through that realization and mm-hmm. it's very slow it's very it nicely feels, paced it, it that it feels that you're building back towards like kind of some kind of everything will be all right again and everyone everyone you've lost will come back again exactly and and But, i thought that was brilliant you know i was like oh shit it's great so right yeah but then what i thought was weird was that like you had this immediate sense of loss and like you were very sad then like five, two minutes of credits roll and then everything is fine again apparently like red has her voice back and the no, transistor man is back like no it that not see, you, this is the point they're not back she dies and she's in the transistor this is where because you weren't paying attention to the narrative you oh, kind of missed it oh okay now it makes more sense <laughs> oh there we go yeah. i mean come on <laughs> man if you listen to someone who made something like unrest you should be paying attention to story dude yeah no but like it was like like i said like it was all like I, at some point i started tuning out like just subconsciously because the narrative had lost me that they yeah. keep saying throughout the games i'll see you in the country and in the end that's where they are mm yeah So, like, but then, you know, where are like where does the final battle take place? It uh, takes place inside the transistor. No, the final battle takes place in the real world. Ah, no. Yes, the final tra- like the transistor and uh, cloud bank and everything like according to me that that is all a virtual world. And you come out of the virtual world to fight that guy in the end, and ev- like one by one because of the program and the virus that he ran. like i mean that's what the camera ta ha they've realized that cloud bank is fake and they've been doing all this to wake everyone up but it didn't oh. work people start dying and so and in the end like everyone's dead and even red realizes that everyone's dead which is why she kills herself so that she can live inside the transistor for whatever 
time she has left with that dude. Okay, I'm going to interject here because uh, we talked about this before. Because I don't think I I don't see that as a realization. I I don't see that as like um. Like, remember I told you that, like, you know, you can, like, it, this is a matter of perception. Like, the way I went into this is, given the functions in the combat and the general narrative in the beginning, I always assume that, you know, okay, this is just a fictional world that's kind of set up around this computer theme, and maybe that's how it is. You know, that's just how it is. Um, yeah, the one thing which I don't understand is, like, the, she also has the transistor in the second world, like the real world, quote-unquote. But then she also has the transistor in the virtual world. Like what? Like I don't get how that works. Like no, no. See that. See that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is that I never distinguish between real and virtual world. I was just saying that okay, it is a a it, it, it's a fictional world. It's like when you read fantasy, you're like okay, it has different rules. So I went into this being like okay, this is a world which has different rules, uh, different you know uh, concepts, and maybe within that they have. they have this concept of you know inside the transistor so that's how i approach the ending and how i approach the general concept of the game um you know so like uh, vivek and i have talked about this before where i was like you know yeah. so th- th- like the ending didn't like you know like uh, when when uh, he had mentioned in one of our previous co- po- uh, podcasts uh, that you know the when you get to the twist and i was like there was no twist there was a gut wrenching ending but there was there was no twist and so he explained what he thought the twist was and i was like oh that's something i just took uh as being part of the story mm-hmm. and because of that I, i i like once again i think it's more of a subjective thing of how you read that yeah yeah but i uh i i do i i still think that you know the way hey, man, it was done like, I mean, it, it it takes all sorts and you have the right to be wrong so that's exactly. okay exactly and, and and i think <laughs> what's brilliant yeah. like okay yeah like we can argue that but what I, i think what's brilliant is the fact that we can still have a discussion arguing oh, this for sure what what uh, i was thinking was that uh, like my personal interpretation was that like this was a sort of an mmo kind of world and the process was basically like the mmo servers are sort of being deleted so the, this is like you know like when memory starts getting deallocated so when people die they just log off and go to the real world and red didn't realize that like that's what i thought Oh, see that's right. still fair enough like i i can see where you would go with that and i still think that's awesome you know like i, I think that they've created they've done a good job in creating this world that's like you know like open interpretation and each one is as viable as next now feeling you know one is like one upmanship there's no there's none yeah. out there my ending is more happy because when red like decides to stop stop playing wow and play, like she <laughs> so, so yeah right uh that's a very happy ending arvin <laughs> um i think i need but, to play the game again now i can say yeah. a lot of things about transistor but that ending is definitely not happy uh and oh no so bright like the, the picture is so beautiful and bright so like i thought that was happy like I was very happy when I saw the picture because it was like a super bright and everything, and it is all like yo stuff. I would, yeah. I would, I would have called it a pyrrhic victory, but it's not even that. It's not even a pyrrhic victory because she doesn't really win at the end. The people don't come back, you know. Uh, and she loses her life. Well, I mean, but people weren't even there before, so like for me, that wasn't even a, like a thing. Like, Red never interacts with anyone in the entire game, like except the transistor. So no, that, that's the same no, those the terminals. There, there is the terminals, which uh, honestly, I, I'll admit, doesn't entirely count because even the terminals were kind of like, eh. But yeah, they were kind of they were kind of iffy. They weren't that great. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But I, I, I still think that you know, like they, they did a great job with living this kind of multifaceted world. I, I still stand by my statement of re, re, that they should have provided a bit more context of what you were doing in the beginning. Cause like in the beginning you're like okay I'm killing this shit called the process I don't know why I just know that I am and then you figure out how the functions work and you know there's that eureka moment when you realize you know that you can mix and match and that's like oh wow um, especially for someone who enjoys those sort of systems but um, uh, you know just 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 to go on a quick tangential and uh, get back to a point I was making earlier. 
where I had said that there were two main uh, parts that really like that I remember. Uh, one is you know the ending, and the the second it was a scripted event. Uh, event uh, admitted, I still loved how it was done. Is I think uh, after the first uh, level or halfway through like you know the first level and a half, uh, there's this moment where the transistor is talking to you, and he's like he keeps saying that you know we need to get here quickly. We need to get here quickly. And so you're like, fine, fuck it, I'll go. And so you go through the door that leads to the next region. And then, you know, the door is black, so you go through, uh, you're, you're kind of obscured. And then all of a sudden, you hear like, uh, you hear uh, the transistor's voice going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, or, you know, the PG-13 mm-hmm. uh, equivalent of it. And you see your character run back out, and there's this giant, uh, you know, mini boss that comes out and that's like that's a really good introduction to that enemy the jerk mm. uh i i thought that was brilliant you know like generally i'm against scripted events but that was that that was great that was brilliantly done and i can like uh i can see viveka appreciating that a lot yeah i mean i i uh, i preferred bastion's narration but i but i like the combat of this mode like i never played bastion twice because I- I couldn't stand the combat that much. But no, here, I, like, I played it for the combat. Hmm. I'd say that this is a better game overall because it, the combination of everything fits together so goddamn well for Transistor. Yeah. yeah. And like the world building is better. They integrated the story with the world. Like they integrated the story with the game mechanics. All the Every function you're using is based on a certain kind of person and their personality. And that ability suits that person's personality. It's really well done. As far yeah. as I like. I probably say like on the balance, Bastion is the more uh, like complete game, I guess, because like here, like I don't like it because of the story, like because of the reasons I said. Like it's too, it tells you too much. It doesn't uh, like show you anything basically. It's all like uh, yeah. it. It requires you to read all these journal entries which even don't make anything clear so i i i'd say that that is intentional like they do yeah. that on purpose they obfuscate on purpose and that's fair enough like uh, bastion i would say is a traditional tale that is like they weren't trying to do anything spectacular in bastion they were just telling like an old school story and they were telling it really really well mm-hmm. and that's great you know that they executed that this is a lot more ambitious like for a second game from a studio this is a super ambitious title and i think they they hit everything except like yeah for like the, they made players work to access that layer of story mm-hmm. and yeah it's debatable whether they, that was right or wrong for them to do yeah um, like, yeah, yeah like, I like the ending of Bastion more like you know the choice and like the 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 part where like Bastion spoilers if anyone has played Transistor <laughs> but not Bastion for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, spoiler. Go ahead, yeah. spoiler. I won't play, play it. No, no. There's a great moment where, uh, like, if you if you act, if you show kindness towards at one point, one like in the bastion, it's it's like a floating island. You have four or five of your friends who you constantly talk to, and uh, like Three. they uh, they give you challenges, right? Some sort of like this, this guy mm-hmm. gives you the combat challenge or. No, they don't give you challenges. They uh, they just talk to you at the home base, and then when you go to the map, you can choose the challenges from there. Ah, okay, but, okay. Um, yeah. No, there is one challenge. I don't remember where, but there is one where the guy just sleeps after, like, doing a hookah or something like that. But yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, that, that's the main character. You go to a hookah and you go into the memory sequence. Ah, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that. I, yeah. I freaking love that. That was a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and Bastion, I think the like for whatever reason, I think maybe it's the first time. So that voice was a uh, hundred times cooler because mm, that yes. has a yeah. voice. Totally. But the effect of hearing it for the first time in Bastion mm. is just amazing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like okay. you know, when you when you begin the game and you're like in that like lying down position and you press yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah that that's brilliant. Mm. Yeah. So, so what happens is, uh, in Bastion, uh, th- one of those friends betrays you later on. So then you, uh, then at the neck, uh, like the second last chapter of the story, you get to the part you catch up with the the betrayer again, and yeah. uh, you can either ch- like you defeat him, but then he just sort of he's on the verge of dying, and 
uh, you can either just let him leave because uh, the calamity and like the calamity will destroy everything so this guy will yeah. die or you can show him mercy and carry him back so if you choose yeah. to carry him back the other enemies in the game they don't attack you they will mm. they respectfully bow no 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 it's the other way it's it, it's um if you're carrying him back mm. uh yeah they will attack you attacked. yeah no you're being attacked yeah Initial- one guy attacks and then no 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 no, no 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 yeah. no no dude i remember this because i love this moment as well is that um you walk, like there's like a u bend and up to half of the u bend they're attacking you and you're taking damage mm. and after which because you were carrying him and not attacking back and choosing to save one of the their own kind they stop attacking ah, and i thought yes, that, yes correct yeah you know they yeah, they yeah. they realize that you know you've gone like you you you're ignoring these differences and mm. you know so that's when they stop and i thought yeah. yeah i agree that was brilliant mm. that was so well done mm. and in, in terms of an ending uh maybe not like gameplay wise like because mm-hmm. you're act- actively moving around and mm-hmm. like for a moment you're like holy shit i can't attack will i die or will i not die mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure it's scripted to be as soon as you get like to a certain percentage of mm-hmm. health it'll stop mm-hmm. um that, that that is not there in bas- uh, in transistor mm-hmm. uh transistor what it has conversely is you know that ending where you know you just press e and then get to the ending and then it plays that whole sequence mm. but as a as a narrative beat um i think transistor also has a bit of an impact not as much as you know when you're playing through bastion but i still appreciate or i uh, or i enjoyed ba- uh transistor a lot for what it was and what mm. it was trying to do yeah, I, really- i i love that Yeah. I I appreciate that they tried something this ambitious with their second game especially mm. since the expectation from them is was no, people would have been happy if they just made Bastion 2 if you want to be if I like if I'm being completely honest if they made yeah. Bastion 2 people would have just been like yeah that's great that's fine I can play the shit out of Bastion 2 but they tried something really hard with Transistor and I won't say they succeeded 100% for everyone but it succeeded mm-hmm. for me you know yeah yeah because I love yeah, the scenery. Me like ironically they they succeeded in the worst part of Bastion that was the combat for me. So they sure. absolutely knocked it out of the park with it with the combat. But all of the other stuff felt like a step backwards. Um, That's at least how it felt for me. Okay, so if it's any uh, help, there was an article on Gama Sutra uh, I think the day before. Yeah. Where, I was uh, supposed to read it. Yeah, exactly. Where they talk about uh like it's very brief. It's not very comprehensive, but they just talk about the quick uh um uh evolution of how they got to the function system. Um is that they started off with um a like card game. A, yeah, exactly. A card game which was uh but what what is worth mentioning is the like the reason behind why they started with that. Uh one thing that they noticed with Bastion is that people would, you know, find their favorite weapon and basically max that out and stick with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um and as a designer when you or as a game developer, not just a designer, as a developer when you've gone through the effort of creating so many different weapons and so many different mechanics of how they work, it does mm-hmm. suck a little that, you know, people aren't trying them out, you know, they'll find mm-hmm. whatever they like and just upgrade that to the max. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to kind of uh through gameplay kind of get people to experiment you know sure eventually you'll find something that works for you but initially just experiment so they were like trying out this card based system that was you know uh uh i don't know if you played this browser game called card hunter but i'm mm-hmm. assuming it was something like that where you know you have uh you build a deck of abilities and while in combat you draw cards from that but uh i think one of the issues that they found with this was that the sense of progression was lacking because it, the deck would reset with every combat and even though you had a new ability and your deck may have been buffed or had like more yeah. powerful cards because it was still randomized how the card was drawn or how the deck or, or how your hand was drawn you you could start off with something that didn't feel as powerful or didn't feel as meaningful So eventually they you know kept cutting down and ended up at this function system which still allowed um you know uh, experimentation 
and they set it up where um, you know the memory points that each function costs. Mm. When you yeah. die, it would. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you die, it always takes out the most expensive function. Yeah. Cost, mm. Right. Yep. So yeah. it'll find the. Uh, so that's how we would cut down. So they were uh, according to the article at least. They were like, okay, this doesn't feel like such a hard, uh, uh, like um, a hard reset for when you fail. So you can still keep playing, and because you actually lost one function, you may try different combinations or realize that maybe this can be used in such a way. So, just through uh, like through every aspect of this system, they get you to you know try different combinations. And I can attest to this because you know, you know, in the beginning especially when you like you know die or or lose uh, your first uh, health bar. You start, you know, trying to use different things, especially at the fucking boss, man. I hated that boss. I died twice with him. I, at the end, I was basically doing like little bits of damage and running around trying to spam uh, my uh, my uh, you know pause time before he could. But it was brilliant. I loved it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know. For me, at least, it felt a bit odd because I would just always uh, like retry, reset from the next checkpoint instead of. uh like trying to uh like to fight a battle that was clearly lost so yeah for mm. me like it felt like it felt like their aim was uh like they like i could see what they were doing but their implementation encouraged the exact opposite bit mm. so okay uh like how did you feel that like um mm. wh- well, what so, do you mean, like uh, when you say that it it encouraged uh like um like you didn't feel like it um like like it wanted you to continue what do you exactly mean by that uh well basically if i uh my or my loadout would would usually be like there was the only one function would be pure damage the others would always try to either uh like charm an enemy or implement damage that couldn't be repeated and then there was the uh i would have auxiliary ones which would uh, like you know uh, damage over time weaken the enemy later on uh, like for me the game only became alive once i got access to the void function which would weaken so, enemies before really? that i was yeah before that i wasn't very pleased with the combat system hmm. uh, like okay. my line of thought before void was that this is a lot of complexity for no benefit okay so, i find that a bit odd because right off the beginning like uh you have the uh you have uh uh i'm breach. forgetting the name you breach. had breach and uh, what was the long shot one like the straight uh it was breach okay so there's breach and the, okay so there are two crash. one that was yeah, one crash. is crash yeah. the other is breach right so the okay so, uh, funny enough i remember the functions by the lore behind them rather than the name so red's uh, ability um what that allowed was that you would hit something and then you would leave them vulnerable to the next attack right mm-hmm. and the second one was a long shot so i would actually keep them as separate so i would use their use red's ability as um either as its own like a primary or as a as a like a, a buff to another uh, function and then so i'd lead with that and then hit them with the other three abilities to you know do that extra damage the breach damage basically So you know like I I never felt that there was a, a lack of mm. complexity or maybe too much complexity because when you start out there's just two you know uh and then you add on to it when well, like I always like I would just think so I was like okay this does 60 damage this does 30 damage over 2 seconds so I was like why would I do 30 damage over 2 seconds when I can just do 60 damage again so I would always just do like that's what i would do like i would go for the most optimal route so that's why i would later on what i would do is void stack void couple of times use the 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 function that uh, if you pair uh, the sparky function with the void thing you can it will stack two voids instead of one and you yeah. use the lower cost thing to reduce cost so you stack void twice then you have the there is a function which basically just like she blasts them up in the air or something like that mm-hmm. you do yeah. that and Bandits then or yeah and then you charm somebody else uh, so they don't attack you and then 
when they are landing you do the the area of effect thing which mm. leaves behind the thing so that's the maximum damage recipe once i found that like a, yeah it was the game became uh, much more of a like i would impose challenges on myself like, instead of what the game was doing this okay. was way um, into like 1.5 playthroughs basically so okay well i i think that you know this is probably where you know as um as the designers of the game they were probably ex- expecting you to experiment more um I, I, like once again this is pure conjecture but i'm assuming that you know um you, like you fell into like a preferred set of actions right no i actually like before that point i had experimented a lot i would at every checkpoint i would try something different to okay. find out but once like something clicked then i could just estimate my damage per second i guess like i don't know what it da- damage oh. per action it bar gets. thing yeah so so then i would just optimize like once i optimized that like i didn't feel a reason to switch to a less optimal strategy okay and this is during your first play, uh, playthrough no no, no 1.5 it... playthroughs 1.0 oh, okay so i haven't done a recursion yet i've only yeah. played through it once mm-hmm. so maybe like I, uh, so i'm speaking from a first playthrough perspective mm-hmm. um uh yeah exactly rashi so like for me uh like in the first playthrough uh one thing that always motivated me to like you know go you know with differing skills is the fact that i was trying to figure out the lore is that you know like uh, i'm like okay i've you know you have to use first the function as a primary then as a secondary and then as a full character passive um and each one unlocks a little bit of lore so i then kept cycling around each ability and so that was fun like i enjoyed that i was like okay you know what it's ensuring that i don't get into a set pattern um but of course but you know after you finished that you do find certain combinations that work for you but that being said like and especially because then i went to uh, the steam forums and kind of checked what uh people were saying uh i i i did realize that people have different favorite options and it's all based off of their play styles the stuff they enjoy like me personally i enjoy uh what my younger brother enjoys call- calling a very passive aggressive style of gameplay um is you know you basically fuck with your opponent for a long time so i enjoy using purge as my main or as a secondary of something that's aoe based and then using charm okay you know uh while trying to get away and then letting the enemy kill each other while taking overtime damage like that was how i enjoyed my gameplay but a lot of other people you know were talking about how they mixed um breaches with uh the long shots with aoe with the packet strikes and you know that like i enjoyed the, like i loved reading about the fact that everybody had their preferred gameplay style and they found their optimal builds accordingly so i'll i'll see like i'll play a recursion and then maybe be- get back to you guys about uh you know what i feel about that but damn like I, i like just that function system i love the fact that they had to like you know they did this they had 20 abilities and then they uh split that up and mm-hmm. uh like i i'm like i'm trying to wrap my head around how they how they coded that was it like you know like it couldn't have been just so simple a like state machine where you can say okay um you know this ability with you know this primary and this thing because at some points um based off of what position it was an ability would change uh it wouldn't be as exact as its other functions and so i i'm still trying i'm still thinking about that when i get time but yeah like uh, obviously i'm talking this much about it i'm that excited about the game it, i love that combat system mm-hmm. yeah for me it was a bit weird because i um uh, uh, yeah like for for the first play through i was not very uh, pleased with the combat then the second then for the 1.5 like for half a play through i was very uh, like i was experimenting a lot i was trying different things then i found the most optimal thing uh, then, and then like for the final half i would just use that like i wouldn't exactly just copy that strategy but i would uh roughly use the same the same strategy with minor alterations based on what i would encounter so for example if i encountered like 
four or five tough enemies, I would use charm more. If I if if I if I would encounter just like one or two enemies, I would just uh, like blast through one in one turn and then take some damage, do do the like kill the other guy. So so yeah, like for me, like uh, the the design is very interesting. Like it's very good, but I as a developer, I'm like. I shudder a lot at this system because how many possible combinations are there? There must have been plenty. Like I don't know if they've yeah, properly yeah. balanced all of them, or like. I I don't think balance. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fairly balanced, but not like you know like perfect balance. Oh, mm -hmm. Perfect balance is a myth, but mm -hmm. um you know like I don't think that was their uh their motive. Like first of all, because you're you're a single player game. You don't need to worry about balance yeah. such degree. You know, you're more worried about does it feel right. And sure, there may be some, you know, completely optimal builds, and maybe I'm gonna try out what you suggested, and see if you know how effective that is. Um, I think you know, c considering what their uh, their design goal was, um, I, I I think they've they've done a pretty damn good job. Uh, narrative wise I'd rather you know leave it to you and Vivek to kind of decide how effective that was but for the most part I enjoyed it I still had moments where I was like eh not you know not feeling it but I, I still love the fact that they got people to you know experiment through lore uh, or at least players like me to experiment through lore um, so yeah and surprisingly this podcast Vivek has been as silent as I usually am so I'm kind of happy about that <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you guys have played the game recently. I played it around, like, it's almost been a year since I oh, played yeah. it. Dude, you so played it, like, almost a little after it came out, right? Yep. Both of us, I guess. Damn. Yeah. So, my, uh, uh, my recall for Transistor is good, but it's not as good as yours is going to be. You guys are uh. fresh from playing it. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I will say that, um, you know, like, I, I've been practically geeking out and waiting for this podcast where we can, you know, talk about the combat system. I'm still in complete awe of, you know, how they, like, coming up with that idea and then implementing it so well. Um, yeah, I'm just stuck on that. Yeah, so so I think we have talked about it oh, a lot. Wait, oh, like ahead. you guys didn't talk about the limiters or anything. The limit? Oh yeah, the limiters. I totally forgot. Even yeah. that has lore attached to it. That's so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just start ranting randomly, like you know, Rashi. I don't know. You, know, you should have mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it, it just came to my mind. And wait, there was something missing. There's something missing. And I'm like, oh, wait, it's the limiters. That's what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the limiters were, yeah. I, like, even there, like, it, it's brilliant. Like, they, they do the same thing. Like, they, they let you, you know, you use the limiter once and then you get a bit of lore. And I love the way it's, it's like, the way it's written. Like, uh, I have to give them massive props for the writing. You know, the, like, the way they talk about the limiters is, like, you know, from Royce's perspective. I love that. I, I I love. I really like that. And the thing is, because I haven't hit my recursion, I I think I'm missing three main like main abilities and about four limiters that I haven't unlocked yet. So you know, when I get time, I'm really looking forward to my recursion playthrough. Also, I, it has to be said that whole programming theme that they have throughout the game, fucking brilliant. I know. I mean, I mean. I've never been, you know, like, so, I don't know, emotional about a game or whatever, but this game really, really struck a chord with me, and, you know, I, I just went crazy about it. I mean, I usually, I'm like, okay, TK, if someone's, like, you know, saying, okay, this game sucks, I'm like, okay, fine, yeah, maybe sometimes, you know, people don't agree and stuff like that, but for this game, I was like, I don't know, I just, just loved this game so much that... I just can't, you know, like, I don't like hearing people, like, you know, do say stuff like, okay, I don't like it because I didn't get it or stuff like that, so. 
don't know. She has finally converted to like the other. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally fan girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. totally fan girl over this game. Hmm. So, what did you like so much? What resonated with you? I I felt it was okay. You know, well, there's no such thing as perfect, but it was just next to perfect. Uh, you know, it was just a next to perfect game for me. because i mean everything like the 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 songs i mean the the music the artwork like i said and even you know the whole thing about the whole the, the combat system find the story was a little weak maybe because you know like i'm just fig- just uh, after talking about this game with you guys i'm just figuring out stuff like oh acha aisa bhi hua tha oh acha <laughs> you know stuff mm-hmm. like that but mm-hmm. otherwise the, the uh, i mean everything there's nothing that i can say is bad about it or something that i didn't like about it and not many games come close to what these guys did you know mm. yeah the art the art wise yeah i think it was prob- uh, yeah like i i rate bastion and this equally because both of them were different styles and both of mm. them were executed to near perfection nobody yeah, i do agree that this is a very well executed game Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think Super Giant has uh, hit like uh, like they they've created this identity for themselves where mm-hmm. it's like okay, we are yeah. you know they have this 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 art style that's easily recognizable. Yeah. They have a very clever combat system, yeah. or if not that completely clever in the case of Bastion, just really well polished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and then you know this narrative style that's just mm-hmm. theirs you know the yeah. fact that have i mean this... i know just the perfect like game for them to tackle next zelda i mean that they they already have navi <laughs> so that there is your constantly talking sidekick and like yeah it's, it would be perfect like super giant does zelda i would love to see that you know the narrator in uh in in these games suddenly be like hey listen <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be somehow, somehow i never played bastion i don't know i tried playing it i i started the game many times but i just couldn't play it i don't know the yeah. the combat just i didn't like it yeah no that's understandable like combat was definitely the weakest portion of bastion that, that's that's actually pretty fasci- uh, fascinating for me to hear cuz i enjoyed that combat so what exactly did you guys feel that was you know uh so weak about it I thought it lagged a bit of uh, like it lagged uh, like I don't know what to call it like you can call it like fluidity impact hmm. uh, like it like for also there was the other technical issue like at least when it launched on PC uh, because of the way it was uh, coded uh, the directions on the 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 screen didn't match with the direction on the keyboard. So if uh, you, oh, oh, you mean like yeah. W R S D, right? You yeah. So if w you press, a. yeah, if you press W, it would just move up, like straight up. Yeah. And, and as speed. an isometric, that shit doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like in some places where there are narrow hallways and such, like that would make it odd. Yeah, it would be a bitch. Like I, yeah. I'll admit, like I hated that, but I don't know, like through, like you know, after a while, you just kind of get used to it. Yeah, Which and like none of the weapons, like it, yeah, and I, none of the weapons really like since it was uh, like in the vein of like Diablo and stuff like that. You had melee weapons and all all of that stuff. Uh-huh. Like the the weapons didn't have like enough impact. Like you would just often it would feel like you were just wailing on something until it died. Hmm. So that was a uh, okay. like that was like primarily due to that. Like they had a lot of variety of weapons and. Uh, like they had everything on paper they had everything like they had a sword they had a bow they had a gun and like they had uh, like some other stuff like a spear so they had all of the stuff on paper but somehow like it didn't uh, like because it of the click. yeah because of the lack of uh, like feedback i guess that the weapons would give you like com- compared to that. something like diablo where like it feels meaty every blow you make and stuff like that so i thought that was the bit we yeah that was pri- pro- the reason that and the movement stuff hmm okay 
Well, I I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was it still good. Strong. Like, it is Bastion out for Vita? Hmm. I don't know. It has been ported to like every platform possible. I thought. Yeah. iOS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an iOS. <laughs> I've seen the iOS version, but I haven't played it exactly. Um, but it looks decent. Like uh, they've made some uh, changes that uh, are a little fascinating. Like you uh, yeah, know. I think I play. Yeah, I think I played it. Uh... Once um, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. I mean, you you, you just have to tap on the enemy or something, and then he just yeah. does attack himself. That's what like, happened. As a conversion, I think it's very, very um, uh, what's the word? Simplified, I guess, but not at the expense of making it feel very dumbed, uh, dumbed down. Mm-hmm. So I think you know they did a good job there. Um, but otherwise, you know, like you know, I'm. Fairly, you know, uh, I I love my mouse and keyboard. So I like after I I checked out the uh, uh, the iPad version. Uh, a friend of mine had it, and I was I checked it out for like five minutes, and I was like, okay, I, this is like for me at least, it was counterintuitive to tap around like that, where I felt like I needed more control. Mm-hmm. But that being said, they have. Um, they have kind of uh, changed the way enemy behavior and enemy health works hmm. to adjust for that, to adjust for, you know, how long it would take for, you know, you to tap on something uh, or for the reaction on that. So, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a damn good job on them, you know, to, you know, to account for that. I think that that was great. Hmm. Yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, like I don't really have any other thoughts on this. If any, like everyone should, I guess, we, should we just sum it up? Our thoughts? Or... <laughs> Super yeah, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a great game. Yeah. By any and standard, it's a great game. It's just like that we are disappointed because of our high hopes for it. <laughs> really? Or, or if we want to go like full patriotic, it is headed by an Indian. <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> We can we can hit that uh, that vein, um, but yeah, Is he I probably... yeah, 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 Amir you know. Rao. yeah, yeah. Uh, Indian origin, I guess, like yeah, yeah Indian origin. I, yeah. But I love the story but, of uh, how. By the way, get... Indian origin counts as at any one point was photographed anywhere near India. Like that's Indian origin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you shake hands with somebody from India, you are like of Indian origin. Like, yeah, I thought that was the rule. I mean, didn't we yeah. all agree that that was the rule? Like, con- considering our newspapers, uh, yeah, that's kind of... If, if you have an Indian last name, it's done, man. Uh, you know, you're set. Um, but I, I think I, I, w- what I really enjoy is, like, the story of their beginning. Uh, is, you know, like, they all, they've all worked at, you know, different studios and stuff, and they were friends, and they decided to do this, you know, super giant and start together and all. And Amir Rao goes to his dad, and he's like, you know, uh, can we use the living room to start our game studio? And, like, every time I read this, you know, I kind of have, like, this mental, you know, you know, situation. Exactly, like, you know, like, hello, dad, (laughs) can I use your living room, please? And, you know, like... (laughs) It's very amusing. That's all I can say. I just want to. I just hope Gen Z someday, you know, like reveals a bit of how she approaches art. <laughs> yeah, like I bet, like her like two tutorial stuff. would be like you know the one of those like imagery things where it's like one draw an outline. Oh my God! No, Arvind, please, no. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's for descriptions, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So Vivek, we haven't heard enough from you about, uh, you know, Transistor and Bastion. What do you like? You know, let's let's see, uh, hear you weigh in on this. Weigh in on uh, specifically what about what I think about Transistor and Bastion? Yeah, like I, I don't know, like I've probably kind of gone. I mean, uh, if there are, they're probably candidates for best isometric perspective games of this this generation of games, man. I mean. There's very little to say, and I'm counting Diablo 3 and I'm counting Torchlight 2 when I make that statement. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, I actually enjoy them more. Like, I mean, Torchlight has and Diablo do different things, but like, I enjoy Bastion and Transistor more than those two games. So that's yeah. for sure. 
I think that's a damn bold statement to make. Like, uh, I, I want to hear more about uh, why you think so. Well, I mean, like. <laughs> no, uh, from Vic saying that you know these are uh, you know compared to Diablo and Torchlight because I know there are a ton of people who will be like what the fuck you know. Um, uh, all right, like I mean this uh, this is of course it's extremely subjective. I'm not saying that this is uh, for everyone, but for me, uh, Diablo is out of the running because of Diablo three mainly. You know, and I'm talking about this generation. So Diablo two doesn't even come into come into this conversation but diablo 3 has all that internet online only bullshit right and it has that auction house which like i mean it the experience is truncated like torchlight 2 is basically diablo 2 but prettier they, they, they don't they don't do anything new like you know bastion um, was the first game that made me look at that at a game that was in that particular perspective that had the mechanics of a diablo game and it delivered a phenomenal story Okay. And and games with that camera perspective don't deliver phenomenal stories unless they're it's Baldur's Gate 2 unless it's like it's a particular kind of RPG game that's made in a particular kind of way. Games that have like this high like games the games like Bastion are about loot. Games that look like Bastion and play like Bastion are about loot. And right. Bastion in its own way kind of like subverted that formula completely by not being about loot but instead it was about, you know, it was about a story. and it was about mm-hmm. this really well made isometric game that plays very really well right yeah and trans uh, uh, trans yeah sorry go ahead no go ahead you were saying something no i, I was going to like i think that's a damn good justification like you know i can see uh, your point on this i was about to like you know say that you know i uh, you know just personally i i like torchlight more than uh, diablo but that's fully subjective but Yeah, I see your point. Like, you know, it, it it delivers on, you know, more than just being this, you know, little, you know, endorphin uh loop about, you know, getting, oh shit, I got this awesome loot. Oh shit, I got this awesome loot. It's more than that. And I think they do a good job with the, you know, the you know, new game plus or recursion for Transistor with yeah. wanting you to try more. It's not it's not just the recursion, it's not just the fact that that combat system is brilliant. I mean, they use everything so well from the from the way everything slows down when you enter that that mode when you're using functions and the way you you line out a path making it yeah. like mm. a combination of a tactics game and, and and like a real time isometric action game it's not just mm-hmm. that it's that they integrated all that with their world and they did it like pretty much seamlessly yeah i mean it's not that yeah you have to dig a little bit but that that's some smart world building integration there you know uh so yeah i don't know like those i love both those games they're amazing uh the like my only criticism of, of both of those games would be that you know uh of of bastion it would be it, it's that bastion's a great great experience but like i i don't whenever i play a super giant game i find that i don't want to come back to it ever again hmm but that from that from my perspective like i mean i am done That game was a great experience. I played it once. I'm never going to play it again. Uh, and this is including the the like the new game plus modes and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like the oh, okay. I'll 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 be frank. Like there are very few games I do new game plus kind of stuff with. And, okay. You know, uh, I only do it for games that are extremely rewarding. Okay, and uh, by this you mean what exactly? Like rewarding. Uh, sorry. Like uh, when you say like games that are extremely rewarding, uh, what are you looking for exactly? Oh, okay. I'm looking for uh, like not just the fact that uh, not just like not narrative stuff. What I'm looking for is that the systems change up when I'm playing new game, new game plus. Okay. There has to be something more than just do this all again. Uh, but now you're more powerful. There has to be a, a hook to it. right okay uh i would say the closest like the a game the kind of game i'd love to play a new game plus of but i've never been able to beat is mm-hmm. uh, dark souls <laughs> <laughs> because i'd like to see how those systems changed uh or how they adapted oh, okay you know once you, you know, once, you, once you, the game and you're at the top like 
how, what kind of challenge does does a game like that have you know hmm fair enough like i i like i i get where you're coming from with that and uh yeah i've got nothing else to add to that <laughs> okay so i guess that was it for our uh, <laughs> transistor podcast yeah so yeah, we... just... no go ahead like any final thing you want to say uh if you haven't played transistor or bastion and you don't mind the fact that we spoiled it go play it now yeah i don't think the spoiler will actually like matter that much she dies <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, she doesn't die. She just like stops playing WoW and like goes outside of her house well, that you see in the ending. Like, okay, well, for some people, true. that's like dying. Okay. Yeah. See, see, that's your version. My version is she went like all emo and went suicidal. But like you know, you know. Um. No. Okay. Jokes so, aside. They uh, just are saying it's evil to stop playing WoW. Like what the hell, man? Like. Stop oh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's Actually, a, that's he a said great, something great a lot more controversial than that. He said that it's evil to commit suicide, but uh... yeah, see, Vivek picked up on that shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I think um, I I really like uh, I I just really like the way that ending works because it feels very, and I I hate saying this because like you know it's usually stuff I rail against, but it it feels very mature as a storyline. um yeah yeah somehow i don't mind people like you know like committing suicide or smoking in <laughs> you know <laughs> in all these I fictional don't mind worlds at all <laughs> okay there like i i i want us to kind of like let's edit out the part where she says in a fictional world and just continue from there <laughs> so we mind. make her sound like a monster <laughs> exactly let's do that <laughs> most people already think i am one so it doesn't matter <laughs> i don't mind people coming to suicide in fact you know what world population it helps out yes it does i mean oh wow i feel like <laughs> but yeah i mean in this game especially it was it just uh i yeah, yeah like you mentioned it felt it feels mature and feels beautiful it in a way beautiful. yeah it, like, it oh, feels wow. neat No, well, right, beautiful. We're, we're getting into some really dark territory here. We're starting to suicide. No, dude, dude, dude. Our this podcast is titled "Suicide Is Beautiful," and then we linked Marilyn Manson. Uh, <laughs> dead horse cast, not the kill yourself cast. Uh, but I, that was my poor, poor attempt at a joke for forever. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it kind of. I tried. I was trying. So, so okay yeah like ignore the last part of this podcast and <laughs> where we dwell on suicide yeah yeah see that's why like my ending is the best it's a happy ending like yeah yeah people just like you know stop playing wow yeah like what could be happier than that like nothing is the answer <laughs> you know you sound like someone who's talking from experience Yeah, I know. I used to play WoW. So that's why I'm saying like it's the happiest possible ending, like the best universe. So anyway, yeah. Bye, bye, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> podcast over now. <laughs> yeah.